Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin. I should say welcome because this is the first video I've made for this channel in a very long time and this is really kind of the relaunch of this channel. And I wanted to show you my new truck. I've been getting some questions about it since I posted a photo of it on Instagram. This is the GMC Sierra 1500 AT4 Carbon Pro Edition Duramax Turbo Diesel. It's a mouthful, it's a really sweet truck. And I wanted to tell you guys about the truck but also what I plan on doing with it because a lot of what I plan on doing with this channel revolves around this truck. There's a lot of other stuff that's not truck related, but a lot of it has to do with this. So let's take a look at the AT4 from GMC. So this is the 2020 GMC Sierra 1500 AT4. I opted for the Carbon Pro Edition, which we'll touch on later, but I also opted for the three liter Duramax turbo diesel engine. The reason I did that mainly, uh, I've never owned a diesel before. I kind of wanted to, verdict still out on whether that was a good decision or not, but I wanted to for this one specifically because of the fuel economy. Uh, so you get about 22 in the city and 26 on the highway for a combined of 24. And uh, that is a very conservative number because on the highway, I've reached up to like 31 miles per gallon. It is incredible for road trips, which is why I wanted this truck in a diesel. I was actually looking at getting a Raptor before I bought this truck, but the diesel option swayed me so hard towards this. I couldn't resist and uh, it's been sweet. So inside you're actually getting 277 horsepower. So it's a little lower on the horsepower than the uh, V8 option, but you also have the same 460 foot pounds of torque. It has a 10 speed Allison transmission, which comes standard on the AT4 trim. And basically AT4 means that this is their off-road performance package. And it's more than just a facelift. You do get a facelift because you get rid of all that chrome. It's a chrome delete and everything is color coded to the color of the truck. And you get this nice, gunmetal gray grill, I guess, and these vertical red tow hooks, which is a really nice accent. But underneath the hood, you get a lot of upgrades as well. This one comes standard with skid plates and a two inch factory lift. You get monotube Rancho shocks, and it also comes with mud tires. It's actually 18 inch wheels with mud tires. This was a package that the dealership I bought from had, which is a 20 inch wheel with all terrain tires, which is fine. I mean, mud tires, all-terrain, it's fine. I'm going to be mostly driving on the highway, but the mud tires did look really, really nice and knobby, but um, I'll eventually upgrade the tires and the wheels. I've got a lot of plans for the truck, especially as far as appearances go, but I, I do like the way it looks off the lot. I think it's a really nice, aggressive truck, and uh, I'm a really fan of how this looks as opposed to the rest of the 1500s. I'm not a really big fan of, of the standard 1500 and the Denali. Come on, it's a brace face. It's just huge chrome grill. I'm not about that. I like this a lot more. Um, I might get rid of this red GMC for a black logo on the front and the back. I think that'll make it look really nice. I don't like the contrasting colors here. This is like, like a burnt red and that's a bright red and that just kind of irks me, but everything else about it looks fantastic. So probably the biggest question I get every time somebody asks me about this truck is how's the tailgate? And it has the multi-pro tailgate that comes standard on the AT4. You can opt to not get it, but uh, I don't know why you would. It's pretty sweet. So you have this half tailgate really on the top, which allows you to get in without bringing down the whole tailgate. And then you've got this little panel here. Um, but you have six different ways that you can use this tailgate. I think there's probably some gimmick to it but there is definitely some utility as well. Like this is a really good place to work on things. Like if I were out here and needing to edit or work on my computer, this is about the perfect height to do that. It's a little taller on, on the, the standard 1500s. It's probably the perfect height with the two inch lift on this. It's a little taller than, than my elbows. So still a great place to, to work on things. The way it works 
is you've got two buttons here. The bottom one drops the full tailgate, the top one drops the top half. So if we go ahead and drop the full tailgate here, works as a normal tailgate. This is an extended bed stop. So you have a five foot nine inch box, I believe. So this adds quite a bit of length to that. So you can put longer boards and stop them here with this bed stop. But you also can drop this so you can get easier access to the bed. And then right here, if you push this button, it drops into a step, which makes it very easy to get into the bed of the truck. But what also comes standard on the AT4, I think, or at least the Carbon Pro edition of the AT4, is the kicker audio system in the tailgate, which is really, really nice. We were sitting on the beach just uh, last week. We drove the truck out on the beach, backed it up to our chairs, dropped the tailgate, and we're just playing music on the beach. It's so sweet, but um, it's Bluetooth, aux, or USB. Audio sounds great. It's just a really nice feature to have. The other way that you can use this is another extended bed stop, but it's higher, so you can kind of angle longer boards as well, which is, uh, I think, again, something I'm probably not going to use a whole lot, but I've seen GMC show ways that you can use this. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but it's, it's nice to have either way. Um, I would not have this tailgate because there are some gimmicks to it. Uh, over just being able to have that speaker system and the step built in. It's really nice. Only thing that gives me any pause is what if this thing malfunctions? There's no manual open for it. It's all button driven, uh, which does mean it locks, which is great, but there's no way to manually open it. Like, what if there's a malfunction and I can't get into the bed, right? I've got this tonneau cover. If this were to malfunction, the only way I can get into the bed is to cut this tonneau cover and then get in, you know, which is kind of annoying, but Let's just hope that doesn't happen. And speaking of the tonneau cover, I went with an Access Vanish. Um, there are, this is gonna get us to the next point. There are some problems with this bed that I didn't expect. So I opted for the Carbon Pro Edition. I mentioned that earlier. That means that I have a carbon fiber composite bed uh, or the Carbon Pro box. That gives you extra width inside the bed. It's really lightweight. It's very, very strong. However, like a standard truck bed, any standard truck bed, this one does not have rails. It doesn't have compatible rails. It doesn't have really a way to mount anything to it, which is something that you don't, nobody thinks about that when you're buying a truck because bed rails, camper shells, bed covers, they're pretty much universal. That's just kind of a given, but this is such a new bed and there's very, very little metal in the construction that there are very few mount points, which, is kind of unfortunate because the whole reason I bought this truck was to not, I don't want an overland rig, but I want this to be my camping truck. I want to put a bed rack on it or a camper shell. There is not a single camper shell that works for this bed. Not one. I've looked for two months now. There are a couple of bed racks. I think one of the ones I was looking at is a front runner systems uh, and they, they mount rails to the top of the truck bed which could work, but they don't have any in stock and I've called them and they have no information for me. Long story short, uh, there's a problem. I bought this truck almost specifically to build it up and put stuff in the bed of the truck, like bed racks and stuff. And I opted for this really cool bed, but <laughs> it's so new and so different that nothing works with it, except for this. This Access Vanish is one of the only things that is specifically made for the, well, it's not specifically made, but they have upgraded or updated it to work with this bed. I think there is one other tonneau cover that comes directly from GMC. You can buy it from their website and it's a hard cover, but I had to go with a soft cover because if I do get a bed rack, you can't use a hard cover with a bed rack. I want about a six inch bed rack, so I'll want my tent to be roughly level with the cab of the truck. So yeah, got some things to figure out. And I have a feeling that I'm just gonna end up having to get something fabricated because there are not a lot of options for me right now, which is really, really unfortunate. So inside is pretty much all standard fare other than a few upgrades like the AT4 embossed on the, the headrest and you get uh, these little tan accents on the seats. That's really the main thing that you get with the AT4 trim, little carbon fiber, fake carbon fiber accents around. Standard fare inside other than that. And I honestly fell in love with GM's infotainment system when I did a few press trips with Buick a few years ago. Um, it's just really simple to use, but I mean, I don't end up using it now because this thing has CarPlay. Everything has CarPlay and uh, 
I don't want to go without CarPlay. The, the annoying thing for me is that even though I have CarPlay on here, uh, the CarPlay doesn't work with the infotainment system, meaning that I have a head-up display right here projected onto my uh, windshield, but anything that's playing through CarPlay doesn't show up here. My navigation from CarPlay doesn't show up here like it would if I used GM's navigation and all of that. Speaking of, take a look right here. This is the only issue I've had with the truck so far. Please restart nav app to dismiss error. It, it just does that over and over and over and over on my console over here. It tells me that the SD card is malfunctioning. It worked on the way to the beach. We got to the beach and then it stopped working. So I, I can't even use their navigation if I wanted to. The annoying part really comes in with all of the features that you have to pay for. So you have OnStar, um, all this stuff comes pretty standard, but you have to pay for OnStar. You have to pay for the navigation. You have to pay for the hotspot. And then you also have to pay for the connected services. So I can start the truck and unlock it from anywhere in the world using an app on my phone. And it uses satellite. So it can, even if the truck's in some remote area, you theoretically can still remote start it or lock it as long as your phone has service. But you have to pay for that too. So when it all comes together, you end up having to pay almost 80 some dollars. I think it's like $85 a month for all of those services, which is unreal. And I pay for the $10 a month that lets me remote start and unlock from anywhere because it's really nice to be leaving the office and my truck already be started when I get there and it be cooled off because it, it does this thing where if it's hot outside, it turns on the seat coolers and the air conditioning. If it's cold outside, it turns on the heat seat warmers and, and the heat and uh, just kind of gets the truck acclimated before you get into it, which is really, really nice. One of the reasons that the navigation not working bothers me is because of this. <laughs> it just shows that instead of a map view, um, which I, if I'm using CarPlay, I get kind of the same view anyway. So it's not that big of an issue, um, but it's, it's pretty standard interface here. Big icons, easy navigation. Um, there's a ton of settings, which if you go through, there's just so much that you can do with like personalizing it. So if I use the key that I have in my pocket, it sets my seat to my settings. Alex, if she uses her key, it sets the seat to her settings. And all of these different settings are based on which user is using the truck, which is really, really nice. So since this is the diesel option, you have uh, engine braking, basically. So downhill engine braking, you have a uh, an inverter, 120 volt inverter right here, which is really, really nice. There's one in the bed of the truck. But there's one right here too, which is really cool. Traction control. This releases the tailgate, which is really nice. I've seen on some other models that don't have the multi-pro, you can also raise the tailgate using a button. This one, because the multi-pro is so heavy, it won't close the tailgate as well. Um, this is your override for off on. So when you come to a stoplight and stop, it, kills, it cuts the engine. Uh, so that can override it. Parking assist, which yells at you if you get too close to anything. And then your lane keep assist and trailer braking comes standard. The AT4 comes with a trailering package. What's really neat is that you get uh, USB-C, which is really, really cool. And then you have a standard USB and then your 12 volt. And then right here, you actually also have a second USB-C charger and USB, which is really neat. And I have this going to my flashlight charger, which I have mounted on the side over here. Really cavernous space. I talk about all of this in that EDC video. So if you want to see more about what I've got going on here in the console or anywhere else in the truck, you can go check that out. So interestingly enough, while sitting here, the check engine light came on. I don't know why. That's the first time I've had that happen. Uh, but this is your kind of control center for everything you need on the truck. So four high, low, two high, and then you have an auto mode, which runs in two wheel drive most of the time. But if you lose any traction whatsoever, it kicks in the other two tires so you can gain traction again. And this is your toggle for trailer mode, which if you pull a trailer, put it in trailering mode. And then this runs your modes for normal sport and off road. Uh, fog lamps. This is your toggle for how bright your instrument panel and the center console are. And then this is a cargo lamp. So you have lights in the bed of the truck on the back at the top of the cab pointing down into the bed of the truck. And then you also have a second set of utility lights right here, which are on the mirrors and they point forward. So that's really, really nice to just have standard, just built in utility lights. I do 
plan on adding some more lights on my own and I'd like to find a way to run them to these same buttons so they work with all the other utility lights. The only other thing that I think was an option that came from the dealer for me was the running board. This is a, a standard GM product, it's first party. Uh, it's really, really nice. I like it a lot, um, but it, it's banged up my shins a ton. They're just really rough and I'm not used to having such a tall truck. So when I lean in, I almost always whack my shin on it, which, oh well, the, the benefit to that is if somebody slings their door open in their car, it's just gonna jack their car door up, not my truck, which is kind of nice. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with the truck. I'm a little concerned about what service is gonna be like. I've heard some horror stories about diesels and, and service costs, but I can't imagine it's gonna be horrible. This thing, theoretically, if I take care of it, should run forever. Half a million miles should be no problem, um, as long as I keep up with service on it. But uh, so far, I mean, I, I'm loving it. There's tons of power. It, it walked through these hills really, really easily. And I, I really like that diesel so far. I love the sound of it and the power. Just It's instant, but it's not aggressive or so aggressive that you know it feels out of control. It's very controlled. Um, the turbo doesn't have any lag either. It's just instant power, which is really, really nice. So things I really, really like about the truck. Fuel economy has been fantastic, better than expected. Riding around the city, it can get a little worse than expected, especially if you got a lead foot because, well, it chugs gas when you're start and stop. Like it just, I've, I've gotten down to about 16 miles per gallon which is not ideal, especially when it's supposed to be getting around 22 in the city. But on the highway, I've also hit highs of 31 miles per gallon, which was amazing going to the beach. Another thing I really like are the cameras. This thing has cameras all over, and you can see in front of your truck when you're going up over something, you're cresting a hill, you've got cameras on the sides, on the back, you've got a bed camera. It's got so many cameras, which is really, really nice. And just having newer and updated features inside the truck is really nice. One of the biggest things is with all of these cameras around this truck, it just blows my mind that they don't operate as like a dash cam. So if you were to get into an accident, why wouldn't one of these work as a dash cam? It would make perfect sense. You wouldn't need a ton of storage to make that happen. It theoretically could work and they've just not done it. I, did, I don't know. The other thing really comes down to the lift, which is a good thing. I like having the lifted truck but a few weeks ago, we had to get a washer and dryer. Ours broke, and getting a dryer into this bed is, is kind of tough, because even with the tailgate lifted, it's, uh, it's about chest height. So getting a, a dryer lifted up, we were tilting it to get it in, and it <laughs> went over our shoulders onto the ground. Not ideal. Uh, dryer survived, but having a taller truck, there are negatives to it. Trailering with a taller truck is not always the best, and uh, access to the bed, but with a step, getting in and out has been just fine. Just a few things to, to think about when you're looking at a truck like this is just those little things that you don't really think about until you're in it, I guess. So take it from me, think about those things ahead of time, especially if you're wanting to do a camper shell or a bed rack or a tonneau cover and you're looking at a Carbon Pro, just know that your options are kind of limited. In the future, there's gonna be more made for this bed, but for now, it's still brand new. This engine is also brand new, so accessories and third-party options are not really available right now, but hopefully they will be in the future. So that's pretty much it. Uh, plans for the truck, like I mentioned. I wanna get a bed rack on there, and I don't wanna build a full-on overland rig because I don't wanna drive that around every day. This is my everyday vehicle, and building something up makes it very specific to what you want to do with it and going off road and all of that. All of that adds weight, affects your fuel economy and that's not really what I want. Having a bed rack is something I could use every single day. Even if I don't have a tent mounted to it, I can use it for different things. So I wanna have this truck ready to go for a camping trip if I want to, but also be drivable every single day. So this is not meant to be a dedicated overland rig. I'm just gonna build it up, add a few things to it. Eventually I'd also like to add a wrap to it. Uh, maybe like a dark matte gray. I wasn't really looking for a black truck when I bought this. It shows every little fingerprint and everything all the time. It's impossible to keep clean. So I want something matte gray. That's it for now. I, I will be doing more with this truck over time. I'll be doing videos on it as I make improvements and upgrades. And there's also gonna be lots of other stuff on this channel. I have two trailers that I wanna rebuild, uh, maybe a hovercraft rebuild and camping, lots of camping and outdoor stuff. So lots of stuff 
plan for this channel. If you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in EDC gear, I have another channel. It's Best Damn EDC, and I've done a truck EDC video over on that channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech, and I will see you guys in the next one. So, with that said, I don't have an intro for this video. <laughs> I can't I say let's do... Where am I going to go? Uh... <laughs> Here's the truck. I, I don't know. I have nothing for you. And you have a step, which makes it very easy to get into the bed. And then right here, this... There's a speaker! <laughs> and until next time... I don't have an outro. Damn it. <laughs> that was good.